Welcome to Third Rock Ultrasound. Since 1998, Third Rock Ultrasound has presented educational programs to help clinicians integrate ultrasound technology into their patient care, with thousands of courses teaching thousands of healthcare professionals at worldwide locations. This is Module 5C, Renal Pathology. Now we're going to talk about renal pathology, I believe. Yeah, kidneys. Pathology. Okay, well, that's it's not a lot to talk about. Now let's talk about what you think. Two Two things. We'll tell cover, you, tell we'll you cover have, yeah. two primary topics here, and I'll, I think we should talk about uh, obstructions, yeah, sort obviously. of obstructions in the renal system, and what else? We and we need to talk a little bit about uh, renal masses. Okay, renal masses. I think that's okay. good. Okay, let's get started. The objectives for this module are the ultrasound techniques for evaluating obstruction of the renal system and renal masses. The renal system is most commonly imaged with CT and ultrasound. CT takes more time, uses radiation, is difficult to repeat, and is much more expensive. However, it can usually locate ureteral stones. By comparison, ultrasound is fast, does not expose the patient to radiation, can be repeated, and is inexpensive. However, it typically does not identify the location of a ureteral stone. First, we'll discuss using ultrasound to evaluate obstructive uropathy. Obstructive uropathy can be acute or chronic and unilateral or bilateral. The most common cause of obstruction is calculi that develop in the kidney and become lodged in the ureter. However, a mass or trauma can also cause renal obstruction. Obstructive uropathy causes dilatation of the collecting system in the kidney. This is seen on ultrasound as an anechoic fluid expanding the renal sinus. In this video, it is easy to see how the pressure that has been created by a stone obstructing the ureter has caused this to occur. This finding is referred to as hydronephrosis. A subjective grading system is sometimes used to describe the extent of the hydronephrosis, with grade 1 being mild and grade 3 being severe. This video demonstrates grade 1 hydronephrosis. There are collections of urine that are separated by renal tissue. With grade 2 hydronephrosis, the renal pelvis and major calyces are confluent. Grade 3 hydronephrosis demonstrates extensive compression of renal tissue due to prolonged high pressure in the renal collecting system. The ability to see renal calculi by ultrasound is dependent on the size of the calculi and the relative skill of the examiner. A key characteristic of renal calculi is the presence of acoustic shadowing. Patients with renal calculi may or may not show evidence of hydronephrosis on ultrasonic exam. Often only stones larger than one centimeter are visible by ultrasound. Here is another case of a very large kidney stone measuring 1.6 centimeters in the renal pelvis. It is very easy to see the acoustic shadowing from this stone. This is another view of the previous case. Now you can see the dilated renal sinus adjacent to the stone. Typically, it is not possible to see the ureters by ultrasound, but if there is prolonged pressure caused by obstruction, then it may be possible to see the dilated ureter as it exits the kidney. Renal masses are usually considered to be in one of two general categories, cystic and solid. Cystic masses are very common and are present in 50% of people over the age of 50. Their characteristics on ultrasound include a round shape with distinct borders, completely anechoic with no internal echoes, and the ability to cause posterior acoustic enhancement. Although benign and common, renal cysts can become infected and will manifest clinically with fever, infected urine, and abscess formation. This video is a longitudinal view of the right kidney with a simple cyst at the superior pole. Here is another simple cyst within the kidney. Here is a very large renal cyst. However, typically these do not bother patients and most of these masses are of little clinical significance. Solid renal masses have ultrasonic characteristics which are distinctly different from renal cysts. They are not common. They have irregular shapes and indistinct borders. There is a poorly defined interface within the renal tissue and the sonographic appearance has mixed echogenicity. This video is a longitudinal view of the right kidney. The architecture of the entire organ is distorted secondary to renal cell carcinoma. It cannot be emphasized enough that renal masses can be very, very subtle, and it is not an expectation of a clinical physician to be able to identify these types of masses. This slide shows two examples of small renal masses. On the left, there is an alteration of the architecture of the kidney medulla. On the right, there is a mass encroaching into the cortex at the inferior pole. If you encounter an image that makes you consider the presence of a renal mass, order another imaging study through radiology. Here are a few clinical pearls for renal ultrasound. There is usually a delay of about one hour between the time that ureteral obstruction first occurs and visual evidence of ureteral obstruction is seen on ultrasound. 
If your first exam is normal, consider providing analgesia and hydration to see if hydronephrosis can be seen on subsequent exams. There are a number of false positive causes for hydronephrosis seen by ultrasound. These must be kept in mind when entertaining this diagnosis. With regard to solid renal masses, it is clearly beyond the scope of most clinical physicians to use ultrasound to classify non-cystic renal masses. The bottom line is to get a CT scan when these masses are seen. If vascular disease, trauma, or transplant rejection affecting renal blood flow are being considered, you could use Doppler color technology to look for the presence of renal blood flow. This video is from a patient with a renal transplant located in the pelvis. You can clearly see there is blood flow to the kidney. Another way to check for patency of a ureter is to look for evidence of urine entering the bladder. In this video, color flow is being used to visualize urine as it enters the bladder. This finding is often referred to as ureteral jets. So that's renal pathology. And fortunately, not a ton of things you have to remember about that, but we should give them a couple pointers, two pointers? Oh, always two. Always two, so we're yeah. giving you two pointers, short and sweet. So I'll start off my pointer. I think my point would be to remember that obstruction takes a while. So if you have someone who you think might have a kidney stone and they come in and they've just started having pain, they may not have time to develop hydronephrosis yet. So you've got to give them a little bit of time and be aware of that. And if you have some time to rescan them, uh, oftentimes you'll see that after a, a brief period of time. And my pointer is going to be that you don't always have to use a CT scan for somebody you think has a kidney stone. This is a great technology to take a look and if the patient looks clinically like they have a kidney stone and you have some hydronephrosis and hematuria, then go ahead and treat them as if they had a kidney stone. And if something more serious comes up, they can come back later. But you don't have to expose all these patients to the radiation of a CT scan.